We're so excited for this one. Glad to have you with us. Hey, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth alongside Allie Wagner. And Allie, as I said, these two teams playing really well right now. Portland has won four of five. Chicago's unbeaten in their last four. And they've got all their best players back. D'Angelo really relegated to the bench for much of that season. You consider, I mean, she was the NWSL Championship game MVP for Western New York. One of the most incredible PK performances I've ever seen. The Venus shot! And we've got a goal! She said it was time to stop talking about the defense and look at the offense. And Everybody hustling to get back on side for Orlando. Pew with a chance here, has Hatch running up the middle, Loman trailing behind. Krieger will try to catch up to Pew, no chance. Pew the shot and it's in! signed as a national team replacement player just a couple of days ago. Eubanks, rookie out of Mississippi State. Her Bulldogs will be playing in the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game after an overtime win against Louisville last night. Eubanks making her NWSL debut. Pew! Crisscrosses to get to the ball. Left footed ball across. The shot taken by Hatch, it's a beauty. And neither team really possessing the ball with purpose to advance into that final third with numbers, with any sort of consistency. Gilliland. Looking to set up Huerta. Mots. The cross. Nagasato is defended well. Colaprigo picks it up. The ball he is in the goal! Chicago strikes first. And just a ton of pressure right now from North Carolina being reined in on the Utah Royals FC. And it's the waves and waves of forcing turnovers in the middle of the park. And then you see how quickly they can attack. This Courage team always dangerous from set pieces. This ball a bit low. Now the shot! Oh my goodness! Hello, Mayor Matthias! Excused absence. But perhaps North Carolina found in her absence, they kind of like Jaylene Hinkle taking some of those corners. Difficult ball for Dole Kemper there. It heads back toward the goal. Stengel heads it in, and we are even. You may want to build your attack, but sometimes that Counterattack can work to your advantage. Tough ball for Dahl Kemper to handle. Yeah. Dominate the match like they did in the first half. A lot of turnovers in the center of the park last five minutes or so. Ursig, 
Pops it back to Roland. And now the pressure from Utah creates a chance. And it's in! Brittany Ratcliffe with a rocket. This season, finding a home in Salt Lake City. O'Sullivan, Williams wants to run for it. Will it hold up for her? Smith comes out for it. Takes a deflection, the ball is in the goal! who had that monster of a goal last week, the NWSL goal of the week in the sixth minute against Utah. Jess McDonald has that long throw in at her disposal. Gets it into the area, North Carolina, the sides advance, a shot and an early goal. Crystal Dunn putting that chance away. Her third goal of this season. Paul Riley making sure that many of his attacking players watch last week's game to see how they could be better. Driven ball, Daly won it. The shot taken from Hamilton and it's in the corner. That ball fell to the feet of Kristen Hamilton and she wasted no time. Veer backs. That's gold for a player like her. She just can't close in on it quick enough. Taylor in her first year with Seattle. Perhaps another opportunity here for the rain. It's in! Lagiana. The one to get her head to it. And Seattle quieting the crowd at Providence Park. Shot. The crowd setting the stage, hoping for a moment right in front of their supporters section. Bending toward the goal. Are back. That's all Fishlock drawing that foul. It'll be Jody Taylor to take the penalty. Now she has missed a penalty already this season. And she put this one away. Put Seattle back on top in this hostile environment. Taylor's shot in the corner. Gets around Utsugi. Has Tobin Heath on the far side. If she can get it to her, she does. Haran cutting through the middle. Heath with it on her foot. Back to her left. Clinton Bird coming. Looking far close. The header. She'll serve it up again. Lindsay Horan wins it in the air. And it's in the bucket at this time. Well, you can 
and recovers behind her goalkeeper and saves the day. Jody Taylor saying, give it to me, give me another shot. Maybe she'll get one here. This corner played short. Sugi, looking for the corner, Seattle, back out in front. Well, if you can't score the easy way, put it away the hard way. <laughs> there. Well, with that plan, Jen, it's about being more direct, you would presume, and impressing Orlando and maybe winning physically, and as he would say, ugly. But I think you just even saw it in that last spell. When you have Tobin Heath, when you have Andre Senior, they're still going to be the creative players that can slow the game down, know, know when to take players on, and try to be more nuanced in their attack. So I don't think it's going to be full 100% wheels flying. Edmonds ball really has nobody there, but in this play, and now Orlando has scored! Alex Morgan with her first goal of the season, and boy, was it wrapped up and handed to her and break things open in one instant. Carpenter was sandwiched when she received the ball, couldn't keep control. Monica up toward Naren. She'll get it back, Christine Naren. Try to test Zucker Strom and Christine Nairn. What a goal. Zucker Strom may be a bit out of position, got a hand to it, Allie, but could not keep it out of the back of the net. Oh, we can still keep, keep it going here. Emily Menges has moved over to left back. They've gone to four at the back. Mally Weber, who was playing that left wing back spot, it looks like she's pushing four up the, farther up the field. Can't tell if it's in a midfield line or forward line, but she's moved forward. Mitch Purse is now the right back. They've got four in the back. Thank you, Dallin. Mark Parsons obviously sensing something needs to be better here. Good service from Eve Hattie and Christine Sinclair! They haven't had that much time with their teammates, but I don't think you can use that necessarily as an excuse anymore. Simon now has been here. This is her fifth match as Jan's daughter charging forward. Gunny Jan's daughter scored the first ever goal for this franchise. Tim Rapp takes the shot and hits the corner. Jesus. Orlando is going to get this ball up ahead to Van Egmond. They initially came out and then backtracked. Marta will chase it down. She'll play it back to Poliana, getting the start in the back line for the Pride today. This one lays at the feet and it's in the corner. An early goal for Orlando. And a break out for it, but Ashlyn Harris will have it at her feet instead. Both these goalkeepers positioning off their line is going to be important today with Kerr on one side and Alex Morgan on the other. Can they pick up those balls that are sprinkled in behind? And there seems to have been some indecisiveness as Ashlyn Harris with a bold move there to clear the ball. It was her only option. Sofia Huerta came charging in. And here's Marta, those two assists against North Carolina on Wednesday. Bends it in the header, and Orlando's double the lead. Tom Sermani talked about his team trying to find that balance of figuring out the physicality of this league and playing the beautiful game, which 
he feels his team is quite capable of, and sometimes mixing in long service like that. Good way to change things up. Here comes Sam Kerr on a breakaway. Kerr looking at the goal against Harris, a huge save. Kerr still after it. A little help from the defense. Kept it clean at the moment for Orlando. Chicago still charging. Kerr off the head, and it's in! See how this two front connection between Huerta and Kerr plays out for Chicago. Ertz, good vision to pick out Gordon. It's a long first touch, but Poliana's going to let her get away with it. Gordon's left footed ball. Plenty of time for Krieger. Some fatigue perhaps setting in. It is hot, as we've said, out on the field. Blessedly, some cloud cover has arrived. And so is Sam Kerr. Kerr, one touch into the corner. She's got two. There to take the kick. So Yuki Nagasato and Sam Kerr connecting for the second time in this match. And all of a sudden, we are level. Krieger, beautiful ball, the header in the corner, we're level no more! Sydney LaRue opening her scoring account with the Orlando Pride. Some marking problems plaguing the Red Stars as LaRue did break free on a simply stunning ball from Krieger. I mean, the, the timing on that, it was a thing of beauty, but certainly you do have to be touched tight in the box. I think both teams have struggled with that this season. Ben Eggmund getting it to Alex Morgan, looking far for LaRue. Can she get another one with that? Von LaRue, or on Tom Sermani, I'm thinking about giving LaRue the week off every week. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out these last 15 minutes or so, I'm sure, with extra time added on. Because Orlando's going to sit in their 5-4-1 and allow that service to come in. How do they deal with it? That's how they've been conceding a lot of their goals, and maybe not on the first one, but on that second one. Or, or Chicago able to play through the center and pull out that center back, one of those center backs, through movement in the seams to create the space in behind. Morgan, touching it to Nairn. Back to Alex Morgan. Into the middle for Weather! Would not give a yellow no. for that. I think she just catches her inadvertently on the backswing. Nagasato catches her, I believe. Yes, agreed. Wrong place, wrong time there for Loman. Every inch of this field drenched as Nagasato tries to line everybody up in front of her. And this is where you just have to get it on frame, make the yes. goalkeeper make a play, follow at all costs. It's like Nagasato is down in a track runner stance there. Now she takes the kick. It is on frame, it's coughed up, and there's a goal for Chicago! I think it's probably wise that Sam Kerr does not opt for the backflip in this type of weather, <laughs> although I don't put it past her to break out her trademark celebration. Absolutely. Colaprico will send the ball long. Rosie White. 
into the area for Nagasato. Good control to bring it down. Nagasato with the shot in the corner, and it's good! The forward movement. So Sam Kerr earning an opportunity for Yuki Nagasato to give this Red Stars team the lead. Nagasato saved by Eggerstrom, but the putback is good, Chicago on top! Not a good day for penalty kicks across the globe, is it? <laughs> Communicate throughout every possession. One substitution for Portland to start the second half. I believe I mistakenly called Tyler Lucy Ellie Carpenter in that first play, but Lucy is into the match for the Thorns and for Hubley. Dangerous ball falls down yes! and into the corner! Lindsay Horan has evened it up just a couple minutes into the second half. She timed her run so well because she held off her a little bit and then started the minute Abogabu got on the half turn. So a couple of pretty decent, we'll say, chances for both teams here through the first 10 minutes. That pass picked off by Kennedy, who's looking to catch Bledsoe off her line, and all she does! The NWSL player of the week got caught on that one, Kate. She did. Not a ton of power on it. Zadorski in a good position, covering though she's not gonna stay up with her foot for foot, so she takes that angle that she thinks that cross is gonna go. Zadorski, a starting defender for the Canadian national team. before Williams interceded. Here's Kurtz back on this side. Done. Faces up. A little chip over. Dabinia and McDonald both there. Dabinia on it, and it's in the back of the net! Ashlyn Harris had a hand on it, but it wasn't enough to keep it out as Dabinia and the Courage strike first. players there that maybe could have finished that one off and look at the difference in attack between the two teams and the numbers that are close to the ball as they go forward you see the attackers are Orlando they're on an island out there they're 10 15 40 yards apart after Orlando to try to find a response but they have to get the ball first Get a chance here after the cross from Matthias winds up with Krieger, but taken away by O'Sullivan. Dabinia. Now Matthias. And it's in! North Carolina has doubled their lead! Third goal of the season for Matthias. But that's the counter press that Paul Riley loves to inflict on all the opponents. Executed to perfection that time around. Now Orlando did come back from two goals down against North Carolina in that first meeting this season. They tied that match in the 83rd minute only to lose in the 90th as North Carolina retook the lead and got the win. Here's Dunn, oh boy, McDonald in the air, one touch, oh my goodness! Three goals in a matter of minutes for North Carolina. To the match.
I think this could definitely be a key for Washington is how quickly they are able to make that transition. Right now it seems a little bit slow, maybe a little bit sluggish even from some of the players. You want to start seeing some of the outside backs getting forward. Even your midfielders getting into those spaces. Maybe Whitney Church to take the corner for the Spirit. Far post service headed and into the goal! That one almost looked like slow motion, but just like that, the Washington Spirit have gotten themselves an early lead. Ashley Hatch had been doing a ton of work. <laughs> Bogagoo just hanging out, her heels basically on that sideline. Kennedy takes it over. LaRue gets there, cuts it back, right into the goal and in the corner, Sydney LaRue has tied this match up. He took the ball away. LaRue, though, could not get back with Marta, who's still on the ground, her hands on her knees. Here's Lavelle. Out to Smith. Havana Salon in the middle. Now some miscommunication. Disconnect for the spirit in their attack. Here comes Orlando again. Does Marta have the legs left in her this late in the match? 86th minute. Will this be the one Marta makes the most of? She's into the area again, pulls it back. Marta again, another time. The shot on the left foot and in! Like it's going to be Becamoros to take this into the middle. It goes headed out by Orlando again. Well, miscommunication that time as Ubogagu couldn't cleanly get it out of the back and connect. Corsi. Rodriguez. <laughs> I mean, she's not worried that she's going to shoot it early because you have to wait for the referee to do the whistle. So this is all just mind games. And now they're having a conversation, so. <laughs> well, the first meeting of the season between these two teams saw Utah score early, saw Orlando equalize from the penalty spot. It wound up 1-1. It was Marta who made the penalty that time. This time it'll be Alex Morgan who will have the opportunity. Now, reluctantly, Smith takes her time, retreating. And that's exactly what Smith wants, is to get Morgan fired up a little bit prior to her kick. Alex Morgan, chance to tie and does! been lofted into the area. Not quite the ball she wanted. Not much of a chance for any of her teammates to get on to the end of that one. I don't understand why Kristen Press is not taking these, these services. She's not going to win the ball in the air, so having her be one of the intended recipients of any flighted balls off a set piece, I'd rather use her texture on the ball. Edmonds, Smith way out of her goal. Edmonds with the chip, and she does it! Abby 
Smith was caught in no man's land, and Edmonds made her pay for it. On the bench. Now Marta with that left foot, a chance to try to curl one in. Perhaps find the head of a Tony Presley, Alana Kennedy, Sydney LaRue. Right down the middle it goes. It's headed by Seattle. Marta calling for it in acres of space. Edmonds does well to find her. Marta's left-footed shot headed. Fishlock in the right place. Here's LaRue. Her shot is blocked. Orlando wants a handball. Not going to get it, but they still have the ball. A cross right in the middle. The shot. just refused to give up on that one, didn't they? We'll be able to direct the play a little bit more. We're seeing some more connection in that midfield right now. Four Seattle players are dancing along that, that back line of Orlando. Spencer makes her run into the box. Jasmine Spencer has a chance on the bounce. Krieger caught up to her. Spencer back across to Taylor. Now Fishlock. Seattle displaying some good connection of its own. It's a gorgeous ball Taylor just played to Spencer. Comes Callie. All the way across it goes to Kawasumi. Her left foot a ball to Taylor. Joni Taylor has done it this time. All the work finally pays off for Seattle. by Seattle. So this their second. Rapino was a target on the one in the first half and that's how she scored the game's only goal the last meeting between these two teams. A one nothing win for Seattle. Going to play this one short to Fishlock. Now Rapino will deliver the ball in. Megan Oyster putting it back into a dangerous spot it's finished off Jess Fishlock, her first goal of the season. She has now scored in every NWSL season. Yuki Nagasato. Ellie Carpenter hasn't been able to unleash her speed yet. Some hesitation by Sonnet, forces the turnover. Sam Kerr gets it to her feet. Two defenders in front of her. She takes the shot and got the corner! And just complete exhaustion after that from Sam Kerr. No. They just had after they had solved it in the wide area. And it's interesting that it's been Alyssa Mott who's been caught offside now a couple of times in this match. Sam Kerr is second in the league and <laughs> getting caught there, but she's she's been on in this match. And she's actually been coming back for the ball at her feet in that half space more, but as long as someone's establishing that pressure, pushing that back line of Portland back. Di Bernardo is a couple defenders to beat. She cuts it back, got it onto her left foot. Cross found the head of Celeste Bure. Now Di Bernardo serves it toward Kerr, heads it toward the corner, and Kerr pow! She has two! Set an NWSL scoring record last season for the single season with 17 goals. She leads all time in the history of this league now with 55. Beautiful spin by Christine Sinclair, one of the world's all-time leading scorers in the international stage. Here's Kaylin Ford, another Australian 
playing in the NWSL. Jan Andresina connecting. Klingenberg across. Two substitutes making a difference in that attack, and it's still going for Portland. Carpenter will try her lock, and he's punched. And he's going back toward the goal. She has her hands out to her sides. Yep. Sinclair dishing once again. Heath into the middle. Back to Christine Sinclair. a chance if they win out, if they win tonight, and if they win next week, which will be there, by the way, against Seattle, they would get the right to host the semifinal. And when you're already hosting the championship, that's two weeks, excuse me, we do have the off week coming up. That's quite a home field advantage to be able to look forward to. Sinclair up to Rasso. Rasso, quick cross. He brings it down. Gets around Smith, takes the shot and scores! <laughs> Catley though steps in to take it for Seattle. Quick touch from Fishlock. Utsugi looking for Jody Taylor. English international has really stepped up her scoring as the season has gone on. Addo on the ball. Fishlock. Gets her shot off and it's in the corner. Jess Fishlock with the early goal for Seattle. Target. Someone likes this rivalry. <laughs> I was going to say one of my favorite moments, and we were previewing this matchup earlier in the week on a conference call, and Jess Fishlock was asked to name some of her favorite moments, and she said, hang on, let me get out my list. <laughs> I think she has a new one to add. Purse across the clock! Side back. Denmark, one of four teams who will go into a playoff for that final qualifying spot from UEFA for Nixon's World Cup as Mitch Purse glides forward with the ball, eventually has it poked away. But Tobin Heath snuck back in there, gets her shot out.
already so aware of the danger of Megan Rapinoe to be able to bend it in from there, but you're right, that is absolutely an option at the top of the area. She's a three players out there actually with no thorns around them, should she choose to play that way. Rapinoe's going for gold, it's at the cross! of this season, but it's been a big part of it now in this run. Horan to Heath in the box and the Seeing any of them on the far side is right now, Providence Park is undergoing a renovation, $65 million renovation, adding 4,000 seats. But when this was a work day, and of course the, the park and the team made amendments and made this thing work out and getting this game here, but this is a work day here in construction, so nobody can sit on that side of the field. Jess McDonald, Dallin onto it now in the box and in the goal! That is how fast they can strike! She had to try to come back for it, just not enough. Connection just has not been as good tonight as it has been for a lot of the season for Chicago. McDonald looking for some insurance. Lewis. The shot is a hard one and it's in! The hill just got steeper for Chicago as Sam Lewis gives North Carolina a two goal lead and come on with this. but the final touch has been off thus far. Here comes Lynn Williams after a missed touch in the back from Portland. Williams up high off the post and it's in! Dabinia puts North Carolina on top! And it's actually forces the foul gets her team out of trouble, able to dance away from two players closing in on her. Dahl Kemper's ball will find its way to Hinkle, who quickly puts it back to Jeffrey, who missed it! North Carolina capitalizes! Just enough there to make sure it didn't go in. It does give up the corner. 
North Carolina leading the league in corner kicks this season. They were also the most accurate in connecting on corner kicks. Let's do it again. This time she's going to take Matthias for the shot. Yeah! You'll perhaps see a little more red, white, and blue inside Exploria Stadium tonight, as well it should be on September 11th. And we are so fortunate to be able to spend this 9-11 night enjoying some soccer in the National Women's Soccer League. For the Orlando Pride, they know their fate. They are out of playoff contention. But for Chicago, just four games remaining, including tonight, which means everyone so critical to stay near the top of this very tight table. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Hildred. So glad to have you with us. So glad to have Lori Lindsay joining us in the booth, former U.S. national team member. And Lori, let's talk just a little bit about this Orlando team and what we can expect to see from them now in their final five matches. It's had to deal with some depression and walked away from the game a couple of times. They're obviously an important figure, both internationally for Canada and for a club team. And so important for people to be able to feel comfortable expressing that. Being able to seek help if they're really struggling. There's so much pressure, especially in that position as a goalkeeper. McDonald finds Dabinia. She's looking for Lynn Williams. A ton of space, a shot, and Lynn Williams has scored. So many times, North Carolina had forced a point-blank save out of a listener, not this time. Luis Guardia having a conversation with the players in the area. Now the whistle played on the ground. Nagasato a little closer for the cross, headed by Kerr. Right. Trying to reset for Chicago. Is right. Di Bernardo! The equalizer! You can go to nwslsoccer.com to find tickets if you want to go out and catch a match in person. We've seen record attendance, huge number of fans coming out to watch following the Women's World Cup. And those of you who have been watching know exactly what everybody else has been missing. A league that rarely disappoints in terms of entertainment, <laughs> skill, drama, big names, we've got it all. I thought Richard Farley, who does such a great job of covering the Portland Thorns, summed it up quite well on thornsfc.com when he talked about that match against Utah. Chaos, brilliance, drama. That's what you get. Kerr can bring all of that and then some. Sam Kerr holding on for That one will count. Alan, you have more you can add on that? You guys talking about one player, Vera, on the ball right now. Talking to her yesterday, she felt when you play a team like North Carolina, she can be there in great possession. Pull it down, we got a goal <laughs> set up by Vera. On cue. And Utah takes the lead. Kristen Press does it again for Utah. And it over Houston. They played in front of the second largest crowd in NWSL history, over 22,000 in the newly renovated stadium there at Portland. 
Providence Park, always a great atmosphere for women's soccer, and it continues to get better. Yes, let's keep it going. We've seen record attendance numbers across the league as players return from the World Cup, 60 of them playing in the NWSL. The shot! Kristen Hamilton was the player carrying this North Carolina team while the World Cup players were away. She puts them on her back again. FC right there too, just outside the top four at the moment. Hamilton fighting for this ball. She wins the battle, ton of space in the box. Hamilton lays it off, McDonald, the touch, the shot, and the goal. Turn to Balser. Shake room. We haven't called her name yet. Now she takes the shot. White got in the way. Shell hit the shot and score. Houston might have escaped the first 15 minutes unscathed, but now Rosie White putting the visitors ahead. Breathing that's obstructed but with a mask. There is Simone Charlie, former Vanderbilt Commodore, who makes her way into the starting lineup. Had one appearance for Portland in the last five matches. Gets the start today. As does Dagny Brynja Sauter. There's Landic International back onto the ball. Williams ready to turn and go. Has Hamilton out in front of her. She'll lay it off to Kristen Hamilton, who has had a great year so far for North Carolina. Cross goes the ball. Williams has it right behind her. A chance for Dunn, and North Carolina scores. Paul Riley said, we want to come in and replicate the first half that we had in the 2018 NWSL Championship. In that one, they had a goal in the 13th minute. This one, even earlier. Coming up for that save. off the mark on that service. But Sonnet's good work keeps it alive. Ball. It's in the area and it is in the goal! Portland is equalized! still down for North Carolina, and I'm not entirely sure which player in which jersey that ball eventually went off of into the goal. Talking about interesting connections, there is another one between these two teams. Crystal Dunn, her husband, Pierre Soubrier, is the head athletic trainer for the Thorns. Saw her jump up in his arms, give him a big <laughs> hug at training yesterday. That guy is in a tough position. He just can't say anything after this match. Ball through, Rosso! And it oh. is now in! that ball for Carly Lloyd. 33 goals in her NWSL career for Carly Lloyd. Tied for seventh all time. Rodriguez looks up, holds up, now sends it across to right. 
has Monahan in front of her. She's going to cut it inside. Now look for Eddie who touches it toward the goal. Oh, it is in! was traded to the Sky Blue FC team in June. She's appeared in every game since, and now, what a goal. What a start. You can feel this crowd, what that moment meant to them. Turn there centrally and a chance. Long! Oh, the hits her! Just like that, the lead goes away! Julie Ertz comes away with it, says, Who's with me? The moment? Absolutely no one. She'll just carry it off to the side, give her team time to catch up to her. Did well with that. Here comes Gorowski. Ton of space for the substitute. Gorowski. A little short for Casey Short, who got it back, got the shot off. Her. Short the header! And she's got it! Oh, what a moment for Casey Short! Thought Ashlyn Harris was nearly going to stand on her head again, but Casey Short just kept with it and finds the late goal. Out of the field. Well, she'll probably be utilized more with Ford. Ford will like to link up play more than Tobin Heath. Heath wants to be isolated. Ball in the middle for Rapino. Megan Rapino running for it. Decides to just take her time. Take the shot and hit the crossbar. Yana Welcome to the Cascadia Rivalry, friends. Nielsen. Taylor in the box to shot and scores! Adriana French pulled off the first one, but mighty close on that second. It's a fine line. It really is. Building out of the back, playing with bravery, and not making smart decisions. Well, a mistake in that area of the field so is costly. so costly. French not forced to pay for it. Rapino with some skill to get her on her end. Long. Two defenders in front, curls herself around. Balser has been so good in the box, and yes, yeah, she's got another one! Balser. Blade of hair onto it. Here's Klingenberg. Horan, quick touch to Andresinha. Gordon stepping through to win it for Chicago. Kerr's off and running, calling for it from Nagasato. She's going to get it. Sam Kerr back in behind the defense. She scores to put Chicago on top. Oh. 
MVP on this team of MVPs for the Courage. Here's Lynn Williams, leading scorer this season for North Carolina, and leading the way down the field. Her partner, Jess McDonald, on the other side will put it back for Dabinia. Gordon got there, but Dabinia scores! Driven ball toward McDonald. Kerr was the one to win it. Hinkle. Nobody stepping to stop Jalen Hinkle's service. Now it's Lynn Williams. Across to McDonald, and the Courage have two! the support in the second half. Dabinia, Mewis happy to run on to the ball and give it right back to the Brazilian. Done. As two Chicago defenders around her, Ertz trying to hold her off. Mendoza encouraging North Carolina to get a move on. Send somebody over to take the corner. We've seen a good variety of service from O'Reilly from the corner. Kerr won that ball for Chicago. Dahlkemper right in the middle. Welcome to the NWSL Challenge Cup presented by P&G and Secret. The athletes of the National Women's Soccer League kick off the return to team sports in America as the North Carolina Courage face off against the Portland Thorns. Today, we are reminded that in sports, as in life, it's ladies first. And we celebrate another first in this country as women's professional soccer makes its national broadcast network debut right here on CBS Sports. U.S. national team striker Lynn Williams, one of several options in a loaded and relatively unchanged North Carolina Courage attack that scored a league record 54 goals en route to their second straight championship a year ago. Meanwhile, plenty of changes in Portland. One of the most notable U.S. national team veteran, four-time NWSL Defender of the Year, Becky Sauerbrunn, joining the club. The NWSL Challenge Cup will take place over the next 30 days in Utah. 23 games played by just eight teams after the Orlando Pride withdrew from the tournament following 10 positive COVID-19 tests within their club on Monday. Knockout rounds begin July 17th, the final July 26th right here on CBS. And it feels so good to welcome you back to sports, to welcome you back to soccer. I'm Jen Hildreth, side by side. We're close enough with two time <laughs> Olympic gold medalist Ali Wagner and Ali. We all know with everything going on in the world, in our country today, it is not the easiest time to stage a tournament. Why now? I think that's part of it, but North Carolina is not stretching the game the way they typically do. Some space here. Ball in. Do we have our first goal? I think we do. 
And if you miss the introduction to Haley Mace coming into the match, I bet you don't miss her now. The North Carolina Courage come through to score the first goal of the NWSL Challenge Cup. No, you're right. And if you're Portland and you're in this situation, you want to get Weaver 1v1 against the center backs. I think that was something Chicago did well against North Carolina last year. It was they were able to isolate 1v1 situations. Four explosive players up top. Bray looks out wide. Header in the box from her in. Has she tied it up? Oh, yes, the Portland Thorns get a little life, a little love as we are tied at one. Haran might have gotten the ball there to begin with, but <laughs> Simone Charlie off the bench into the back of the net to finish the play. Has just been bested once in this match. Dabinia scoring first for North Carolina in the 75th minute. Simone Charlie scoring five minutes later for Portland. Mewis, a touch to get free into attacking territory across and a goal! North Carolina and Lynn Williams finally come through, giving the courage the advantage late. opportunity now for Houston to get out in front. Alyssa Nair, the U.S. national team goalkeeper, famously stopping a penalty kick against England in the World Cup semifinals last year. It'll be Sophie Schmidt, the Canadian international for Houston. Schmidt got it! Houston up one! Sure. Here we go. Five minutes of stoppage time, and Shea Groom could say good night. Houston has some insurance. Indeed, in favor of Sky Blue FC. Where does Washington go from here, Lori, to try to put their foot on the ball and, and keep possession and, and play this match a little more the way they would like to? Well, Sky Blue doing a good job of staying compact. We can see that they're in a, more of a mid-block, making sure they're tight between the lines. Not oh, a giveaway in the back could be trouble. It's Anamanu. Goes and has a goal. Sky Blue FC on the board first. Sharon will try to get herself ready. Looks to be Paige Nielsen to take this PK for the Spirit. Nielsen hits the corner, ties the match. And the Washington Spirit have something to show for this improved second half. Perhaps got it in an unconventional way from the penalty spot, but they'll take it in the 89th minute. To be able to make runs, timer runs perfectly, and that is a near miss for Mal Pugh. Oh boy, now it is Mitch Percy does not miss. Sky Blue FC right back out in front. Zinn doesn't need to go to ground, can just stand her ground. She has cover coming in behind her. Just slow down Dabinia. Unfortunately, gives up the penalty kick. Abby Dahlkemper to take it. She beats Campbell this time. We talked about how great Jane Campbell is at stopping penalty kicks, but how about that? Abby Dahlkemper knew exactly where she wanted to put it. Numbers around her to create overloads. Now Dahlkemper got away from her. Shake room. Has another opportunity in the box, lays it off unselfishly, and Lasko says thank you very much. The Houston Dash have tied it up.
stayed patient that time, managed to get it past the pesky groom. Shea Groom back on the ball now though. He's gonna probably wait for some help from her Houston teammates, slips up a bit. Malay coming back defensively to help for North Carolina, does not matter. Christy Mewis, hello. Oh. A mighty strike there from Mewis. In that first half, and I'll be interested to see how Houston can deal with that pressure from North Carolina. Will they continue to look to play out through Sophie Schmidt, or will they look to alleviate pressure and go long and then regroup from there? Either way, we know that pressure, as you mentioned, Jen, comes fast and furious. And Dabinia's shot is also furiously in the back of the net. How quickly did that develop? <laughs> The feel of the second half, Lori, just seems different than the first. Well, it has been the tale of two halves, essentially. Houston Dash being on the front foot the entire. It's a great touch, and the shot! Oh, there go the Houston Dash again. Just as we were about to say, it felt different. Houston slots it home and goes back out in front. <laughs> Chance for North Carolina. This is Bayesden. Over to Williams, and North Carolina has tied it. Bayesden and Williams. Not only did Lynn Williams kind of put a bug in the ear of Paul Riley about Bayesden, but they were roommates in college. Our intrepid reporter, Marissa, <laughs> passing along that information from the sideline. Jason playing the good ball in and saying thank you very much for the call up, Lynn Williams. The shot and the follow up. Oh, the goal scoring is not done in North Carolina. Dabinia does it again. Di Bernardo. Lubert's been busy. She's had her foot on the ball a lot here these last few moments. Can she make something of it? She does! Chicago and McCaskill have scored! McCaskill paying the price, but laying herself out to finish that one off. team who have consistently been at or near the top of the NWSL in the regular season. They've been to five straight playoffs, so the only team in the league to make that claim. They made it to the championship game of the NWSL in the regular season, and this is a chance right here. Thomas has it in the corner. Washington equalizes. Lest I spend too much time waxing poetic about Chicago's success, Washington pouncing on that ball. With Smith and Weaver and their pace to be able to get in behind, and make sure that they stay compact defensively. Rodriguez. I think it's fair to call her a thorn in the side of Portland so far. Labonta into the attack. Her shot saved, but put back in. Get a look, good look on goal. Marissa Everett's a nice story too. 23 year old, played collegiately at Oregon in her second year with the Thorns. Had just four appearances last year for Portland, but grew up a Thorns fan. Haran got it past Smith. Charlie was there. Sinclair's not going to miss that one. Portland now even.
Blackwood. Has LaRue in the box, open. LaRue's first touch got away from her a little. Here is Washington. Lawrence had it taken, and there's a lot of space now for Vizali. Let's go calling for it. Here comes Mewis. Nobody steps to Mewis. Should have been a perfect setup. The ball too strong. Can she still make something of it? Cross. The header. Goal. Houston. Shea Groom puts the dash on top. Now for Orlando. Yeah, this scoreline could look a lot worse if not for a little more precision. Houston has had a few near misses and opportunities like that one from Lasko and a few big stops from Wilson in her NWSL debut. Lasko again gets through the middle, one touch to get herself there, and Lasko does indeed find the corner. Too much space for Houston and the dash dominant again. Fairness match last October. Now she comes into the match in the second half, replacing Denisha Blackwood on that back line for Orlando. My, my fault, it was Kanye Plummer that she replaced. Plummer on the back line. Now on the bench as Presley is in. See if Orlando can get a spark coming out of the locker room. They do. Sydney LaRue doesn't need much, Lori. How about that to get you going? Whoops. Edmonds went back to that outside back position. Tony Presley came on in the middle. <laughs> and Skinner did call it the tale of two halves in that game. Everyone went into the locker room. Didn't want to exactly tell us what was said in there, except that everyone was upset with the performance and knew that it could be better wasn't up to their standards. Really challenged this team coming into this game to perform like they ended that game against Houston. Two first half goals for Houston in that one. They did not score again. Sydney LaRue scored and here's a chance as Dabinia sneaks behind Dabinia one on one and the courage get the goal. All the teams in the NWSL Fall Series had an opportunity to win some grant money from Verizon and the Verizon Community Shield. Top three teams will receive that money, so that's at play. They get to share it with their community partners. Lynn Williams is onside this time, punches it home, and the Courage double their lead in stoppage time of the first half. A step closer to potentially getting some money to share with their community partner, 321 Coffee. It's a wonderful organization Marissa told us about earlier in this fall series where it's a coffee shop that employs individuals with disabilities as baristas and roasters. Another turnover could cause more trouble for Orlando. Dabinia will get to it. Dabinia and North Carolina has done it again. Turnover. Can it be Orlando's turn to make a turnover count? LaRue in the box. Her shot is saved. Roland had it coming in as Vigiano, and Orlando does get on the board. <laughs> to training and be less than what I usually am to be more understanding. And it's that leadership, though, that will pay off going forward, just to continue to set the standard, continuing to find ways to compete. Anybody else that? You know, give those younger players. Edmonds into the box. Her left footed shot will score. And just like that, Orlando pulls it within one. North Carolina might have fallen asleep there a little bit.
Uh, there it's Lynn Williams stretching the back line. Marta and Orlando perhaps looking to make a final stamp on this season. Do they do it? They do! Off the set piece, the Pride have equalized. And for 